shitty car, but we hit the road. Doesn't matter where we go and destination unknown. I don't care where the motor stops. Cause when I want it, then I want it. Yeah, I want it. Oh, I want it. Let's go. Look around, where's the people at? I want a taste of the good life. Hit me with it right now. I'm in it. Cause when I want it, then I want it. Yeah, I want it. Oh, I want it. Let's go. And I won't look back. Yeah, I don't care about the bad shit. What's up, again, your boy Ty back with another video, and I'm here to explain on what to expect or what you may go through at 90 to 100,000 miles on your Ram 1500, like this one right here, the Ram 1500, nicely built. Um, so the problems that I had starting off with this truck, I well, I had the truck at like 40, maybe 38,000 miles on it, and right now it's, it's right at 91,000 miles on it. So. And I only had a truck for three years, so I'm thinking there's no way I put all oh, damn near 50,000 on this truck already in three years. Like, but then again, I used to go back home a lot, back and forth to South Carolina. So that's like 450 there, 450 back. So I can see that happening. But what I went through so far, but what I changed so far, which I should say, as I should say, um, were my spark plugs. I did that yesterday. I exchanged out the radiator yesterday, which that went out on me at right at 90,000 miles. So, I, like it started leaking from the top. At first I thought it was a hose, but then I started refilling it, refilling it and refilling it. And I kept seeing it just piss out at the top. So I'm like, okay, I gotta re replace that. But it, it took me about a whole month until I had time to actually replace it. So, I just had a whole tailgate full of antifreeze just, just ready to fill that fucker up every time, every other time I'm driving it because when it sits, it doesn't leak, but obviously when you turn the truck on, it just creates pressure. So everything's going to like piss out. So that's changed. And the next thing I changed were, I did have rough, originally had rough country upper arm controls on there, but I got rid of those. They didn't last not even a year. Well, just on my driver's side. So I put the factories back on. The factories are still working great as they should. So I wouldn't say I still uh, update them or check them out and we'll give or take. I probably have to exchange these out and get a new pair sooner or later, probably in the next month or two. But as we move on to the uh, passenger side, you still have, as you see, I still have the rough country uh, upper arm control set on this one as well. I didn't have to exchange this one out yet because it's still working in a good order. It's, I have no cracks on it. Uh, everything's working good. No squeaks or anything like that, but I am going to replace that one again with the original factory when I have time again, because uh, just is so that it looked good and look even all the way around. So, but you can, these are uh, exchangeables. So I still got the old set. So I just got to just re replace the, uh, the joint itself and it'll be all right. But I just got to order that. What else you may expect or would not expect to go out with my hub assembly? I didn't never thought that would have went out, but you know, I kind of figured that it would sooner or later because I, when I added those 26s and the 37s on there, I added a little bit more weight. So the turning is going to be a little bit more harder on the hub assembly. So that guy, I, it didn't go like out completely where it like kind of like fell off on me, but it was like ticking. It gave me some warning. So it was like ticking, ticking, ticking. Like when you get out at a high speed, if you're at a high speed, you won't hear about once you start dragging low speed around 30, 35, 45 miles an hour, you start hearing this ticking. Oh, it was so annoying. 
So I already knew, automatically knew what it was. So it went out on my driver's side. My left, my passenger side, not yet, but I'm working on replacing that. I'm going to take it to the dealer since it's still under warranty. So I just put a $500 deductible on there. And they replaced the whole thing. At first, when they told me, they didn't really know if it was still in the warranty or not. So at the first, the, first, the cost of it was $1,300 to replace just that one. So imagine two, it would have been like $2,600 for two. So I'm like, just replace the one so far. And so after that, I had no issues. So I'm generally gonna expect to change those ones out sooner or later on my passenger side. So I'm just, I'm already prepared for it. So when it does happen, I want to be a nervous wreck. I already know what the noise is. I already know what it's gonna be like. I already know what it's gonna feel like. So I'm already gonna have a general description on what it's gonna be. Let's open up this hood. I got it open up for you. You see, I replaced the coil packs. You got new coil packs in there and spark plugs. Uh, this truck has originally 16 spark plugs in total. I did not know that. So I went to the auto parts store and I asked for eight. And they're like, hold up, wait a minute. Why do you ask for eight? This truck holds 16. I'm like, ain't no way. So after taking off the coil packs, it's, it's two spark plugs per coil pack. And I was like, oh my God. So I had a little time with that. It took me all together uh, six hours to do. And I got the new radiator installed. It, that took three hours with the helping hand of my coworker. That's pretty nice. So all together, it was a pretty good job. It was, that was my first time actually changing out a radiator and also changing out my own spark plugs. I always went to the mechanic shop to replace spark plugs, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a try myself. So I did it because I didn't want nobody else working on my truck because it was like something simple, like spark plug change. You know, I watched some videos on YouTube of how to do it. So it's kind of self-explanatory. I like getting my hands dirty, I don't mind. But if it's like something major, like real big engine work, dealership is going because I'm not working on it because I don't have a lift. I don't have uh, an engine hoist or whatever that's called. But any major uh, mechanical issues, I'm not dealing with that. So good luck. But that's kind of only the big issues that I really have with this truck so far were my hub assembly, a bomb controls. That was just on the um, aftermarket brand. I do not recommend rough country up arm controls. They do not last long. They, I, I had these on for a year and they went out exactly at a year, a year and two months. I'm like, bro, it's no way. So like you start to hear a squeaking noise every time you turn, it's so loud and every metal's rubbing. I even applied the grease that you get in there with, with the tool. I bought that, I put my grease in there and nothing worked out. So the up arm controls, the radiator, uh, misfires, which is just going to happen sooner or later in your engine when your spark plugs start to wear down. So just if, we, if you're misfiring on one of them, like maybe your six or eight or one or three, just replace all of them. Get it out of the way. Um, yeah, it's going to cost your arm and leg somewhat, but at least you'll have it done. Your truck's going to be working just fine. Uh, there's nothing really like I like this. It's a really good truck. Ram's a really good truck. I did not see. I always had a I had a Chevy at one point, a Tahoe. Work pretty good. You just got to keep up on the maintenance. If you keep up on the maintenance on your vehicle, it'll last a lifetime. Keep up with it and don't dog it. Cherish your vehicles. Cherish your vehicles. So that's that. I cherish Rambo. I put a lot of work into this truck. So I may look into replacing the tie rods sooner or later and my and greasing up and replacing the actual steering column. I do have to replace that because uh, I am sque squeaking a little bit, just a little bit. Maybe it's losing oil or grease. Maybe I have to just maybe I just have to grease it up a little bit because I know they told me that at the dealer, but they said it was just leaking, uh, losing like just low on grease. So it's like okay, but that was like a month or two ago. So I'm st I'm still okay. I just got to get to that, but it won't take me long to get to it because I'll eventually get tired of hearing that squeaking noise, and it'll be like. I gotta get it done. So I'll have that all figured out and worked on. But other than that, it's a really good truck. If I were to get another truck, it would most definitely be a Ram, which is gonna be a TRX sooner or later. So keep that in mind. This truck is for sale. So if you want to, um, you know, give it a buy, it is listed at 45 right now. So I may drop the price depending on um, the situation. But other than that, ha! 
And if you want to know the uh, brand that I use for the coal packs and spark plugs, these are the coal packs. I got the Duralast Ignition Coal Multi-Pack from AutoZone, which is the uh, manufacturer and dealer recommended. Here are the spark plugs I got as well, manufacturer and dealer recommended, the Iridium Long Life's spark plugs. The Denzos, I mean, you can go above and beyond with these spark plugs and coal packs, but you know, since it was my first time, I just got what I what was needed and what was the basics of it. So that was that. They work fine. The truck's running great. So I don't have any issues with these whatsoever at all. All right, guys. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe to this video. I will be back with more. Until then, goodbye and thank you for watching. Now I get hurt, then you fuck my hoe, then you I ain't got no points to call I got love